This channel is made possible by viewers like you. My viewers, subscribers, and patrons greatly help to keep this channel going. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for all of you. Please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any uploads. And if you'd like to go the extra mile, please check out my Patreon page. For just a dollar a month, you'll get access to what I'm working on, previews of upcoming content, and even early videos, along with other tier options for those that are interested. Thank you, and now on to the video. 2023 has been a pretty big year for RPGs, when we have seen a lot of releases from larger projects along with mid-size and even smaller teams coming out with new and interesting games. But sometimes I do think with all the big RPGs and JRPGs, they can suck up all the oxygen within the room, and this means we have titles that get overlooked when they deserve that attention as well. Trinity Trigger was one of those games. I saw some glimpses of it, and I was interested just based on its simple approach and action-style combat. In some ways, it honestly reminded me of a 3DS game, and I don't mean that in a negative way. After being able to sit down and enjoy this game, I was glad to keep coming back to it as I slowly beat it. Trinity Trigger may not be a game that does much new, but it manages to do a lot right, and in some ways, it was the perfect game I needed at the time. I really like this one. Get ready! Trinity Trigger is an easy sell and honestly a game that works well for JRPG veterans and for newcomers that are looking for something to try out within this space. I know there are some that think new releases must always push what the industry is going for or the genre can do. For me, as long as a game is good, that is all I care about. Not everything needs to be this big revolutionary thing. The way I describe Trinity Trigger is it's a delightfully charming JRPG comfort food type of a game. For example, many of the story elements you have seen before in other titles, and the combat system while very very fun, it isn't anything new. But this game presents something where I knew exactly what I was getting, and it leaves me very satisfied when I ended each of my play sessions. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just need a game like this. Alrighty, let's get going. <sighs> Thank you, I appreciate it. There. <laughs> Here. There. So let's start off with the combat system. This is a hack and slash dungeon crawler. You will fight all manner of monsters, bosses, and explore various locations. You get a nice variety of weapons to use that continually expands as you complete dungeons. One interesting thing about the combat system is the use of its stamina. As you attack, this will drain your stamina bar. Now you can still attack with no stamina, but you will do little to no damage to your opponent. You will need to manage your stamina when contending with all the monsters. For your defense, you have an evasive roll. The roll actually does not use any of your stamina, so you can freely defend yourself even when you have exhausted all of your stamina. You do gain stamina back over time, but there is a quicker way to get more of it. If you can evade right as an enemy is about to attack you, you will then net some more stamina, so you can stay on the offensive. This means that you are rewarded rewarded for learning and reading your opponents well, and sometimes a variety of them are all coming at you at once, because oftentimes you're up against a few different foes at the same time. Like many things within the game, this is a rather simple yet enjoyable experience. Evading at the right time is rewarding because it keeps your attack power high for longer, along with providing the player with that sense of a quick reward each time you're able to pull it off. There's a combat flow like state as you are evading at the right time and then dishing out the damage with your stamina that you have. Now there are some other options while in combat as well. You have a heavy hitting move that you can do when your weapon is glowing. Then when your bar is full, you can unleash more harder hitting attacks or even heal yourself depending on the weapon you are using. Then there is a team like super attack that does a lot of damage too. You have a handful of different weapons that each player can earn that you'll be able to use. Each of them act differently and have their own combos. For example, you can fight with a sword, axe, lance, bow, gun, and a few others. Trinity Trigger has good progression and keeps things enjoyable along with the simple style. When it comes to your weapons, you can choose what combo moves to do. Some even provide you with health when you strike an enemy. Then you have the three offensive slots that you can fit with different options like improving your attack power, armor gauge damage, health recovery upon killing an enemy, along with others. The same is provided for your defense options like more health, armor, preventing different adverse effects, and more. These are equipped for each weapon, so you can have a different setup depending on which weapon you are currently using, and you can switch to any weapon while in combat too. Crafting wise, you get to create better options for this area as well. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
I think the developers did a pretty good job at providing boss variety. Many times they will use mechanics that you see while exploring the specific dungeon, and then you need to use them in a fight with a larger foe. For example, in one dungeon you need to hit yellow mushrooms to create light. The boss fight here has you contending with impaired vision, and making sure that you need to hit those mushrooms. Others might require you to use a weapon that you just earned to break through the boss's defenses. It is a set of little things to help keep each fight interesting. The same can be said about the areas you explore. You have a forest, night forest, lava area, snow area, and much more. Many of these come with their own unique enemies and even unique elements. Like the desert area has quicksand that can suck you down while in a fight, and now you're in a new area and need to contend with other monsters too. Sometimes this is even flipped on its head later on. So the desert area has you dodging those sinkholes, whereas the dungeon in the desert might actually need you to use those sinkholes to unlock other areas. The game is filled with a bunch of side missions to do as well. These range from simple quests to ones that have a bit more narrative to them. Don't expect anything overly extensive, unless you are counting some of the post-game quests that sort of act like an epilogue to the story. But for the most part, the side missions help to flesh out the world and bring some personality to each of the areas, along with an element of humanity. Story-wise, Trinity Trigger checks many of the expected JRPG boxes. A main character who does not remember elements of his past. Warring factions, gods, destiny, fate and ultimately breaking free. This stuff is all done pretty well here. What I think really strengthens the story is our group of heroes. Cyan, Elise, and Xantis, along with their triggers, help to make for a fun group and have good chemistry with each other. Trinity Trigger is also not that long of a JRPG. It will probably take you somewhere between 15 to 20 hours to complete the main story, and add on some more if you plan to complete all of the side content. The ending is satisfying and leaves a bit open to allow them to potentially make another sequel. Honestly, I would like to see another one since I really liked this one. Trinity Trigger is an underrated and overlooked JRPG, and one that I think deserves more attention. Does it do anything new? No, but it does do a lot right and provides such an enjoyable ride that I was happy to keep returning back to this one. The visuals are rather simple, but the voice work and especially the music really brings up the presentation. When it comes to the flaws, I only had a few minor ones. I thought the sound mixing could have been a bit better to make some of your hits have some more punch to them. There were some minor frame rate issues that popped up here and there. I played on the Switch, so I'm not sure if this is also present on the PS4. There were a few spots where you need to hit something with your ranged weapons, and that specific targeting was a bit tough with how the shooting is in the game. Outside of this, these things really didn't hurt the overall enjoyment here. I highly recommend Trinity Trigger. It is probably my comfort food JRPG of the year. Have you played Trinity Trigger? If so, what are your thoughts on it? What are some other JRPGs or RPGs that you have been enjoying? Let me know all of this in the comments down below. If you're interested in being notified of new videos, please hit the subscribe button and bell. And if you'd like to support the channel and get early access to content, please check out my Patreon. All of the links will be at the end of this video and within the description. And thank you very much for watching.